bring in Mustafa Barghouti, the Secretary General of the Palestinian National Initiative, joining us from Ramallah. Mustafa, good to see you. Tell us more about this lion's den. The group released a statement on social media saying that more is necessary, that it's time to unleash the lion from its den. Why? This is a group of young people who participate in the struggle of liberation of their country from the Israeli military occupation, which has lasted for 55 years, and the system of apartheid that Israel has consolidated on the ground. It's a struggle for freedom. It's a struggle for independence. It's a struggle to end the colonial Israeli system of oppression. And what you have seen today is an act of terror from the side of Israeli army, which committed a massacre taking the lives of six people, including a child who was only 16 years old in Ramallah. I, and, and that brings the number of Palestinians killed by the Israeli army to 183 this year alone, including 42 children. You know, a group like this, though, the argument could be made that they contribute to the violence. Um, and I'm not saying that this is connected to this group, the Lion's Den, but just in the last few days, we saw in the killing of one Palestinian man, uh, the Israelis said that he had not only fired on soldiers, but had killed an Israeli soldier earlier this month. So, according to know. international law, according to international law, people who are under occupation has the right to resist, uh, including using military uh, military arms against their occupiers. Isn't that what the world is praising in the case of Ukraine? Uh, why do we see double standard here? Is the international law one or not? Hmm. What we have here is an Israeli occupation, which is the longest occupation in modern history. What we have here is a system of apartheid and oppression of the Palestinian people. 100,000 Palestinians have been killed since 1948. But the world is shying away from pressuring Israel to end the cause of all this violence, which is occupation. Hmm. Wouldn't you say that the pressure has been building on Israel, including from the United States? Not enough. The United States can force Israel immediately to engage in a true peace process to end occupation. The European Union and the United States have great leverage if they want to use it. Hmm. If they threaten Israel that there will be sanctions against Israeli occupation, then the whole course will change. But unfortunately, what we see here is double standard. 10,000 punitive acts and sanctions on Russia in less than two months, and not a single sanction against Israel with 55 years of military war. You know, Mustafa, you make great points. That's why we love to have you on our show. You know, you're there in Ramallah. The events over the last several weeks, is there a different feeling there now? Would you say that the tension is greater? Is this violence seen as a worrying escalation, or is it kind of more of the same, which in itself is a very sad state of affairs. Well, you have to understand that the younger generation in Palestine is so fed up. They don't have jobs. They're unemployed. They don't have a future. They don't have anything to look up to. Uh, they are oppressed by the Israeli military occupation uh, day and night. And uh, they have given 28 years to the Palestinian Authority to, reserve, to resolve the problem through negotiation. What they have seen since Oslo agreement was signed is nothing but more settlements, more occupation, more oppression, more destruction of their land. And that's why these, these people, these young people, understood that Israel understands only the language of force and that they have to take to struggle to achieve their freedom, like everybody did under colonialism, like uh, Algerians did against French colonialism, like people in South Africa did to end apartheid. All right, Mustafa Barghouti, thanks very much. Thank you.